Why did these ancient Europeans have holes cut through their skulls? Does it have something to do with letting evil spirits out? And what does it have to do with this cow? These skulls were discovered in the megalithic tombs of the Neolithic peoples of Northern Europe and were long assumed to belong to the people who built them. Recent analysis has shown that that isn't the case. So who do they belong to and how did they end up inside these tombs? This tomb in Krakow in northeast Germany was built by the Funnelbeaker culture and amongst the pottery and disarticulated human remains were three skulls showing trepanation. Before we go further we need to talk about trepanation for a minute. It's a surgical intervention in which a hole is drilled or scraped into the human skull. Cutting through the bone exposes the outer membrane around the brain and it's done to treat health problems related to intracranial diseases or to release pressured blood buildup from an injury. You might have heard about the famous trepanation of skulls in the Americas, but it's also seen throughout Neolithic Europe and continues into the Bronze Age. And ancient Greeks wrote about it and it continues to be practiced into the modern period. And you might have heard that these dangerous procedures were carried out by our ignorant ancestors to let evil spirits out and so cure madness or perhaps chronic migraines. Or maybe you heard that it was done for shamans to let the spirits in. So let's go back to these skulls from Germany and see what we can learn from them. This first skull is from a girl aged between 7 and 12. The trepanation is huge. It's 4 by 8 centimetres along the midline of both parietal bones. You can see the cut marks recorded in the illustration. This is an especially dangerous place to do it because there's a major blood vessel running through the centre. This little girl who lived in about 2200 to 2000 BC sadly did not survive this procedure. This next skull is from a young woman who lived perhaps 200 years before the girl. This is a 4 by 3 centimetre trepanation between the left parietal and occipital bone. Again, you can see the cut marks. In this period of the Bronze Age, in this area, people were using copper knives, but they would have been rare, so these trepanations might have been done with flint blades, and this young woman survived her procedure. Our skulls have a smooth outer and inner layer, and in between there is this spongy looking material which is exposed when the skull is cut. But during the healing process, this spongy layer is closed by the smooth outer material, so you can tell who lived and who didn't when you look at the skulls. The third skull here showing trepanation was from a mature man and might be from 3000 BC and so that would make it a funnel beaker man but we're not sure. It's possible though that the later single grave culture in this area found his skull almost a thousand years after it had been put in the tomb and then decided to put the skulls of their own trepanated people in there with him. These megalithic tombs were built by Neolithic people, the funnel beakers in this case and later repurposed by the steppe herder derived single grave culture, the local variant of the Corded Ware people. Watch my videos on these people to find out more. The pottery and tool finds in this tomb shows these two phases of use, one by the original builders and later by the new people who were partially descended from them. Let's look at another site now, the Dolmen of Saran in mecklenburg vorpommern like that little girl earlier, his was down the centre of the skull over the parietal bones, but this adult man survived. It's dated to about 2300 BC, a similar period of the single grave culture. More remains from a different tomb nearby were dated to the same period and showed a healed depressed skull fracture again of the right parietal bone. This next site is not in fact a repurposed megalithic tomb, but a barrow, which is how the single grave culture usually buried their dead. Usually there would be a single burial, hence the name. Here though, there were two skeletons in the same grave, with beakers, flint daggers and flat axes. One of the men also had boar tusks over his chest. The literature describes it as an ornament, but I want to discuss the importance of boar's tusks and their association with warriors in a separate video in this Bronze Age Warfare series. This guy had a trepanation on the front of the right parietal bone. He also had healed fractures on both bones of his right forearm that were older than his skull surgery. Academics have to be careful about overstating their conclusions, but I'm not an academic, so I can say that this man was clearly a warrior. This guy, though, had a hole drilled straight down through his skull, and he did not survive. He also has another hole on his left parietal bone and a fracture, and he also has two more lesions on the back left side of his skull. This dates from about 2500 BC, so it's a bit older than the ones we talked about a minute ago. 
Again, the academics hesitate to make firm conclusions, but it's obvious that this guy had his skull bashed in by repeated blows to the back and left side of his head. And then, when he was dead, someone carefully drilled out and removed a circle of bone from the top of his skull. I think this piece was retained by the man who killed him. Perhaps he wore it as a pendant or carried it around as a totem. Maybe he took it out every now and again to have a look at it and remember how he defeated this enemy in battle. Or maybe it was done by his kin and they removed a piece of bone to remember him by. After all, someone interred this man in this dolmen and it was unlikely to have been his enemy. Or perhaps his kin found him like this and then they buried him. So what does all this mean? But it's likely that these trepanations were not done to cure migraines or to let bad spirits out. These people had likely suffered depressed fractures to the skull from blunt force trauma. The most important weapon from the period is arguably the stone axe hammer. I'll do a video just on this weapon in future. The procedure was done to remove the broken bone and release pressure from the wound to save the victim's life. Trepanations were mostly survived, even if it was only for a, a short period. Most of these skulls date from about 2500 to 2200 BC, so it's likely that this period of time saw an increase in violence in this region, although there's not enough evidence to make firm conclusions about that. Most of the skulls receiving this intervention are male. Just like today, the majority of both perpetrators and victims of violence were men, but of course women and girls were victims too. This is reflected across the whole corded wear culture, where in one study, 32 out of 38 trepanated skulls were male, and amazingly, only two out of all of those didn't survive the procedure. So, did I talk about the cow yet? Oh yeah, there was a cow skull from before 3000 BC found in France that had a trepanation performed on it. It's unknown if this was the first recorded example of veterinary surgery or if someone was practicing the procedure on this animal before moving on to humans. Either way, it's an incredible scene to imagine and maybe if this practice was common, then it helps to explain the incredible success rate of these ancient surgeons. And it's significant too that most of the trepanated skulls are not from the normal single grave cultural burials, but from internment in these more ancient tombs. There was the warrior with the trepanated skull, but he was an exceptional case because he had another body in there with him and there were way more grave goods in there with him than was usual. So maybe he was an extremely powerful man in life and a famed warrior, and so maybe he was an exception. So why were they put in these old tombs? If they were members of the tribe who had had their lives saved, or, or not in some cases, by this procedure, why did they not get a proper burial in a single grave? Well, it depends really on how the single grave culture people of the early Bronze Age saw the tombs of their funnel beaker ancestors. Did they know that their ancestors constructed them? Or were they mysterious places with a supernatural origin, filled with the bones and artifacts of a mysterious people? So why were they here? Were they in some way tainted by their status as victims of violence? Did they have to be physically removed from the group in life too, or was it only in death? Perhaps there was some metaphysical danger of corruption if they received ordinary burials. Because if it was nothing but a medical intervention in the same materialist way that we would perceive it today, then why the markedly different burial practice? So maybe there were evil spirits associated with these people after all. Whatever the meaning behind it is, the existence of these skulls shows that the late single grave culture was a violent time when skulls were smashed in by warriors wielding axe hammers and war clubs, but also that it was a time when highly skilled Bronze Age surgeons saved the lives of almost everyone they operated on. Future videos in this series will feature the weapons, warfare and warriors of the Bronze Age, so subscribe if you like that sort of thing, and if you're into prehistoric and medieval violence then buy my books, the links are in the description. Thank you for watching.